Thank you for joining me. I'm Gord Long. A reminder before we begin, do not trade from any of these slides, their commentary, for educational and discussion purposes only. Always consult a professional financial advisor before making any investment decisions. As we wrap up 2023 and look towards 2024, we begin the annual process at Matasi.com of writing our annual thesis paper and outlining our 2024 Under the Lens macro themes and our 2024 Long Wave investment themes. In preparation for establishing the themes, we always do a deep dive into what the markets are technically signaling. This year will be no different as we begin with the big picture technical perspective and drill down from there. As such, we will distill that larger research effort down to the items outlined here. These are technical market signals that are underway, and as such, we can expect to influence the 2024 economic and financial landscape. We'll start with some charts our long-term subscribers will no doubt quickly recognize, but importantly, need to be included as part of our 2024 framework. We have found this long-term chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Gold Ratio to be particularly insightful and has helped us over the years to get the major market trends right. It highlights the cyclical periods of stagnation we experienced in the 1970s and the post-dot-com to great financial crisis eras. It is signaling we are at a major cusp of another period of stagnation or the possibilities of a continuation of the current rising trend if programs like quantitative easing or a hybrid of it are again adopted. Our research has decidedly placed us in the camp of a downward movement with worsening stagnation, unfolding stagflation, and a potential debt crisis as the beta drought decade unfolds. We can always be wrong, of course, because the form monetary and fiscal policies will take can and often does diverge from expectations based on major unfolding geopolitical events. However, the level and rate of growth of global debt to GDP, the degree of financial derivative leverage, and increasing geopolitical risk continues to support our expectations. The current movement towards reshoring and de-risking is only further moving the world further along in the advancement of deglobalization, definancialization, and slowing mercantilism, which we have been outlining for some time now. Clearly, the era of the great moderation has come to an end, and lending rates can be expected to establish new levels higher than the historic levels experienced during the great moderation. The global ability to fund existing debt levels has begun crowding out production investment and savings within governments, corporations, and consumers. We can expect slowing and even shrinking rates of growth in standards of living over the next decade. In our new world of creditism versus capitalism, we have reached the point where we no longer can grow credit fast enough relative to economic growth. That doesn't mean the world is coming to an end, only that we require a period of consolidation, debt stabilization, and adjustments in expectations, institutional governments, and social norms. Change is coming as part of the well-documented fourth turning before the world continues on its ever-evolving growth path. The yield curve is one way to bring the elements of this big picture into the clearest focus within the context of developments that may unfold in 2024. The top panel shows the historic yield curve for the 10-year U.S. Treasury less the Fed funds rate. On the left is the pattern that unfolded prior to and during the 2000 dot-com bubble and the 2008 financial crisis. The middle frame shows the corresponding movement in the S&P 500 and the bottom panel, the Matasi momentum indicator for the yield curve change. The labels in the yield curve frame point out that during both crises, the yield curve inverted twice in yellow before going positive in pink, at which time the S&P 500 experienced its major declines and lost momentum. The economy experiences well-telegraphed difficulties over a 24 to 30 month period before actually finally showing heavily in the equity markets themselves. On the right, we can see that COVID stimulus has distorted the pattern and effectively dragged out the process, but nevertheless, we have had two inversions and it can be expected that as we get closer to the Fed pivoting, the yield curve will positively steepen 
and then move into its traditional slope of longer-term yields being higher than the Fed fund rates. That is when the market historically sells off, as the realities of why the Fed is reducing the rates hits a recession, starts taking its toll in the economic reports. You can see that the dotted line laid in here says that this will happen in 2024. It will be sooner than the dotted line suggests, but how much sooner? Again, we drill down. A simple reality is that the Federal Reserve does not lead but follows the market. Specifically, the Fed funds rate follows the two-year Treasury note yield. When the two-year note falls, it isn't long before the Fed follows and starts cutting rates. The two-year note has started falling and is signaling that the Fed will soon follow. As this chart with the yield curve is measured by the two-year yield minus the Fed funds rate illustrates, when that difference gets into the current area we are in, an area of stability in the markets is happening. The overall market forces actions in both yields, once controlled by the Fed, the other controlled by the funding markets. When the Federal Reserve is forced to increase rates at accelerated rates, as shown by the dotted lines, it is almost assured that the historical reaction will be the eventual potential destabilization of the financial markets, which once again we've arrived at. The market is currently estimating that pivot to begin in the March timeframes. Psalm's Law postulates that a recession is triggered when the average U rate is 0.5 higher than the minimum three-month average of the past 12 months. From the November payroll report, this suggests this would be triggered by a U rate above 4% and occur in the next two to three months. Since the markets until November have sold the last hike, which occurred in July, we have likely been in the window of seeing front-running of the first negative payroll. The November 3.7% unemployment rate suggests that we may be a little earlier in the front-running trade. We can expect to see yet another reversal to the downside once the data unambiguously shifts from soft to hard. This scenario tracks pretty well with the historical aggregation of the yield curve, unemployment rate, and the S&P 500 levels associated with market dislocations. We have a lot of other confirming data, but a nice confirmation is about consumer spending and consumption since the U.S. is a 70% consumption economy. It is all about the U.S. labor market. The U.S. labor market remains decisively soft. Hiring of labor is slowing with the JOLTS report down, but as yet no firing of labor, that is, no negative payrolls. However, growth of the temporary workers is now contracting by negative 6% year over year, which historically has always coincided with the U.S. already being in a recession. This independent report I find highly valuable when I see the degree to which the BLS continuously uh, massages data and then subsequently later adjusts them, always in the same direction, down. We are getting very close, and the red dot may soon arrive quite quickly. The five-year bridge between the 10-year and two-year is further confirming the analysis. Of course, anything unexpected can always happen, and you can never underestimate what the powers will do. They often change the rules to get the outcome they desire. The wild card here is potential re-emerging inflationary pressures, which could add delay to the analysis. Let's now look at the technical signals coming from the U.S. dollar for confirmation or divergence. The U.S. dollar is presently in the last leg of a major Elliott wave degree correction. This leg is the Red Sea wave down off the B wave bottom shown here. It has completed its initial one wave and beginning a downward two wave. The one two wave is shown here with a completed one two within it also now completed. The red arrow shows the current expectations, which is retracing much of the previous inverse head and shoulders pattern. We further expand the pattern for more granularity and see a number of alternative targets and time frames. Expectations are that we will see overall weakness in the U.S. dollar throughout the U.S. presidential election cycle. A weakening dollar is normally positive for stocks, but poor for bonds with rising yields required. But that isn't always the case for various reasons. So let's first look at the U.S. Treasury bonds as represented by the accepted risk-free benchmark as the 10-year U.S. note. Clearly, 2024 has every technical indication of weakening yields, which matches expectations with the Federal Reserve actions we're looking at. 
The fall in yields in 2024 may not be as large as markets expect, with 3 to 3.5% being on the low end of the trading range. The Fed may aggressively take down the short end, but the long end is going to be a problem without reintroduction of quantitative easing or some hybrid of it. The quite bearish island pattern shown at the top of the hourly chart suggests a strong possibility of a 3 to 3.5% 10-year yield in 2024. The 30-year U.S. Treasury is also likely to be hard-pressed to get much lower than 3% next year. Currency, along with nominal and real yield movements, can give us further insights into gold's direction as a non-fiat currency measure. 2024 may very well turn out to be a major upside year for gold. Technically, it has tested an unusual quadruple top with a clear bullish cup and handle pattern in place and a break of the overhead resistance will take gold to the potential of maybe $2,500 an ounce next year. This is supported by potentially a weakened dollar, heavy central bank accumulation, dominantly by the BRIC 11 uh, countries, and weakening real rates as economic growth slows. In the first nine months of 2023, central banks bought 800 tons of gold. This was more than January to September period since 2000. Reasons for this include diversifying their reserves away from the U.S. dollar, trading it for financial purposes, adjusting the level of their reserves, depositing it to earn interest, and using it as collateral for market loans. The World Gold Council estimates that central bank demand added 10% or more to gold performance in 2023. They also note that above-trend buying should still offer an extra boost to gold prices in 2024. The People's Bank of China is the largest gold producer in 2023. Emerging markets have been the driving force on both purchases and sales side. Recent moving average crosses shown here, suggests that the breakout may be sooner than most expect. With inflation falling, gold mining stock prices held back from rising gold prices due to inflation-driven mining costs may see better days ahead in 2024. What are our overall conclusions? We are at an important inflection point in the market, and the U.S. equity market in particular, as can be seen in the chart shown here. We are testing the upper trend channel overhead resistance. What is important to note in the chart is the downward trend line in dark black are equal in size and rate. This is normally a high probability outcome. The pattern is an Elliott Wave Double Combo Zigzag Pattern Fractal, which has been occurring at lower degree levels. The long-term trend channel suggests that the WXY corrective pattern is more about consolidation of a significant market lift as a result of government liquidity pumping to halt the damage of COVID-19, as shown by the red box. Additionally, we need to note we have had little in the way of consolidation needed as a result of a massive market run associated with a decade of quantitative easing, as shown by the black trend channel. This would be expected is normal and is healthy. There is a chance that the markets may be in for a much bigger correction over a longer period than we are currently suggesting. The parallels with the dot-com pattern are concerning many technical analysis. There is little doubt as we release this video that the U.S. equity markets are at a very major long-term inflection point. Q1 2024 will be a very interesting period for global equity markets. The key points I think we should take away from these technical signals are the following. One, concerning the inverted yield curve. It has always been right. We'll have a 2024 recession. But the open question is whether it be soft, hard, or even worse. Second point is dollar weakness. We can expect it in 2024. However, longer term, the dollar strength is probably in order, as based on actually the other global countries being even weaker. Third, bond strength with concerning falling yields. Higher duration risk premiums are here now and is now the new norm. Quantitative tightening will likely end sooner than currently expected, and yield curve control and quantitative easing or hybrid is now highly likely in the cards. And four, we're going to probably be in a range-bound area within equities, falling dollar and higher rates counter downward market pressures, and slowing growth drives contracting PEs. We'll see downside, but it may not be as bad as, as is currently estimated.
we can be sure of, of little in everything we've been going through, but at least we have a roadmap upon which we can set our macro themes to and come up with some investment themes for 2024. These will be published in our February video releases at the end of January, following the 2024 thesis release in January. As I always remind you in these videos, remember politicians and central banks will print the money to solve any and all problems. Until such time as no one will actually take that money or it is of no value or limited purchasing value, that day is still in the future. So take advantage of the opportunities as they currently exist. Investing is always easier when you know with relative certainty how the powers to be will react. Your chances of success go up dramatically. The powers to be are now effectively trapped by policies of fiat currencies, unsound money, political polarization, and global policy paralysis. I'd like to take a moment as a reminder, do not trade from any of these slides. They are for educational and discussion purposes only. As negative as these comments often are, there has actually seldom been a better time for investing. However, it requires careful analysis and not necessarily following what has traditionally been the true and tried approaches. Do your reading and make sure you have a knowledgeable and well-informed financial advisor. So until we talk again, may 2023 turn out to be an outstanding investment year for you and your family. And I sincerely thank you for listening.